in this lesson, I'm going to explain the tools that you'll need for both for this class and for any work that you will be doing as a background artist. The main tools that I want to highlight are your software and hardware tools and the brushes. Personally, I'm going to be working in Adobe Photoshop for this class, but you can use any digital painting app that you like and you can follow along with me. Since we're going to be focusing on specific skills and approaches that you need to develop as a background artist, the software doesn't matter hugely as long as you can apply those techniques to the specific app that you're working in. The reason that I choose Photoshop over something like Procreate or any other app specifically for this class in particular is because Adobe Photoshop is the industry standard and if you want to show your work to a prospective studio and land a job as a background artist it's going to be great to be able to demonstrate to them that you can use professional grade software like Photoshop. Background art for professional animation studios is nearly always done in Photoshop. The main reason, apart from the fact that it's you know, a very robust program, it can create massive file sizes with little to no issues, but the main reason beyond that is that within any given background, you actually need to be able to work with multiple, if not tens of multiples of layers. And that's really where I think Photoshop is ahead of the curve in terms of its ability to you know, dynamically handle so many layers. In animation, not only do all of these layers become necessary in order to create complex paintings, but very often some of the elements within the background will need to be animated themselves and for that reason they need to be on separate layers. So if you're committed to learning the art and craft of background design, then I highly encourage you to try out Photoshop. You don't have to buy it. You can, you know, have it tested for a while, for a couple of weeks and see if you like it. The other tool that you'll need, and this one you can't really get around, is having a drawing tablet and a pen. If you're on the iPad, you'll need an Apple Pencil. But if you're on a laptop or a desktop, then, you know, you can get a cheap drawing tablet. But again, I might encourage you to invest in a decent, good quality one like a Wacom. I, my setup is very, very simple. I use a Wacom Intuos Pro. It's not, you know, nothing fancy. I've had this now for years and it just has never, ever let me down. And it's great. I highly recommend it. Then the last tool that I want to highlight is your brush pack. Now, it's been said many, many times that you should be able to paint something complex with the simple default Photoshop brushes. But let's be honest, you know, you do want to have an extensive selection of texture brushes in order to create a wide range of textures really quickly. So for this class, I have left a couple of brush packs for you to download and to experiment with and use in your own class project and in your work going forwards. But I also want you to be able to know where to find brushes and where you can start building up your own library of brushes. So my go-to marketplace to find awesome brush packs is Gumroad. And I recommend that you buy your brush packs from artists over there. <clears throat> Another place you can also check out is ArtStation. So definitely do your research, invest in brush packs that you think you will use and just know that there are tons of resources out there for you. You don't have to be limited to what you have within Photoshop or within the app that you're working in. And, you know, I don't want you to feel that that's restricting you. So in the next lesson, I'm going to give you a brief overview of my own Photoshop workspace and how you can set yours up to look just like mine.